I can't remember if I was sitting there by myself or if I were with other family members, but I remember being about 18 years old, sitting in a church pew at a funeral for Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray was the man who owned the neighborhood grocery store. It was a very small grocery store slash candy store. And my sister and my cousins and I would go there every day as children growing up, getting candy from the candy store. And now I find myself at his funeral and wanting to speak. It was a time during the funeral where they invited people to come up and share memories of Mr. Murray. And I so wanted to do it. I really wanted to talk about how I saw him. And yet, I couldn't do it. I was painfully shy, painfully shy. So I just couldn't get up the nerve to stand up and speak. But if I could, I would have pointed out how Even though he fussed when we were kids in the store because there was always a group of us, there was probably about seven of us or eight of us that would go to the store together and it would take us, it seems like, forever to decide what candy we wanted because, you know, those very important decisions in those days. And he would fuss. He'd be fussy, like kind of saying, hurry, hurry and, and, and do your thing. But he also pointed out characteristics in each of us that indicated to me, he saw us, he got us in a way that other adults didn't. Now, I'm telling you this story about Mr. Murray, but this is a story to encourage you, but I'll get around to that. Okay, so if I had the opportunity to stand up and say what was on my heart, I would say I really appreciated the way He let my sister, who was about eight or nine years old at the time, how he let her have credit at the candy store. (laughs) I mean, she didn't have to pay for her candy until the end of the week or whenever she got paid from her paper route. They had paper routes back then. And she would have like these lemonade stands. And so she was quite the entrepreneur. So she always had money. And somehow he knew that. And he gave her credit and created a system where she could make her purchases and then pay at the end of the week. It was very official. And he would point out to the different ones, like I say, it was so many of us. And my cousin, Noreen, who was at that time, and in my opinion, still is one of the smartest of us all. And somehow he knew that. He knew. I mean, this is somebody, I think she got straight A's from kindergarten all the way through high school. I don't think she ever got to be on anything. <laughs> but anyway, I don't even think he realized that, but he knew somehow he recognized that she was smart. And he would say, you're going to be a nurse when you grow up. Because in his mind, if you're smart, you become a nurse. And so those are like a couple of examples of how he pointed out how, in my opinion, he knew who we were. And so I wanted to stand up and share what that meant to me that he got us in that way as children, but I was too shy. And isn't it interesting now that my perspective on Mr. Murray, like I could see that that was one of his strengths, one of his natural abilities. And this is what I do now. I have recognized in recent years that it's easy for me to identify people's natural abilities, their strengths, or what some might call their zone of genius. And I recognize it and help them get in touch with it as a part of what I'm calling their leadership purpose. So their purpose related to their leadership, their work in the world. So as I mentioned, I'm telling you this story about Mr. Murray because it really is to encourage you to think about your own natural abilities or what Gay Hendricks in his book, The Big Leap, calls zone of genius. A couple of years ago, maybe about three years ago, I was talking with a colleague and telling her about this passion, about, you know, really wanting people to be in their passion, be in their purpose, use their gifts, identify their gifts. And she said, you sound like a book I just read recently. And so then she gave me the name. The book was The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, 
who was a Stanford psychologist slash professor who went on later to do uh, work with leadership and business and entrepreneurs and other work in his life. So in his book, he talks about what I was calling natural abilities, gifts, and skills. He said there's activities, there are certain activities that everyone does that fall into the category of your zone of genius. So he points out four zones. I'll get back to the zone of genius in a second. The first of the four that I'll mention is the zone of incompetence. And so it's the zone where you, you're doing these activities, but you're really not good at them at all. You know, you're just not good at those. Those are activities in your zone of incompetence. And then he talks about your zone of competence. And these are activities where you're good at. You're good at, but you don't have any real passion, love, not even real interest. But since you're good at it, you just do it. Just kind of going through the motions and just doing it. Zone of competence. The next zone he talks about is the zone of excellence. Now, this is the area where you're really good at something and people recognize it. Lots of other people are also good at it, but you are too. And they recognize you and they sort of applaud you for this work or those set of activities. That's the zone of excellence. And then the fourth one is the zone of genius. Now, this is the one, the set of activities that you, if you're doing this activity, time just flies by. You don't even, you kind of forget. You don't even realize. You don't have a sense of time. Like, oh my goodness, it's not time already. You were so engrossed in what you're doing. And you're really good at it, better than most people around you in your family, where you work. And it comes naturally to you and easily to you. This is your zone of genius. And he encourages, and so do I, people to spend more time in your zone of genius than in the other areas. And I can, I build on to what he says to move this into your area of your leadership purpose. I think it's important to find your zone of genius sort of as a springboard into your purpose. And so my leadership purpose is being expressed in many ways. In one way, though, is helping people, high achieving women in particular, tap into their own zone of genius and find their leadership purpose. So that's why I'm here now talking to you to encourage you to think about your own leadership purpose and to find and or tap into your zone of genius so it will lead you to your leadership purpose so you can have meaning in the work that you do, so you can have success with meaning, you can have fulfillment in your work, you have direction and clarity. 